Hello and welcome to Season 5, Episode 3 of Fabrically Speaking Live. I'm your host, Claire Rowley, inventor of the Creative Feet line of sewing machine products. And today I'm going to warm myself up for shows that I'm about to attend. Yes, I'm hitting the road again. So if you are interested in learning about which shows I'm attending, you want to go to creativefeet.com and click on the shows and events at the top of the page and then you can see which shows we are going to be at. And something is popping up on the screen here that's different. What is that? Hello JJ! <laughs> and I can't remember what your name is, Crazy, Crazy Crafting from Oregon. And sorry for not giving you guys much notice. Yesterday, I worked from 4 a.m. to 10.30 p.m. So, getting ready for the shows. Generally, what I do is show you a variety of different things that we do with the Creative Feet to help you get an idea of what we offer. And the uh, this day, of course, is always for you guys. So if there is a question that you have about anything related to sewing, embroidery, quilting, and creative feet, don't hesitate to ask me in the chat. I'm here for you. And if you are on uh, Facebook and you haven't given Restream permission to see your name, go ahead and say your name in the chat so that I know who you are. And thanks for joining me. Hi, Lorinda. Okay. And Karen Dean, hello. All right. I was going to give you guys choices of fabrics that I'm going to, that I'm going to demonstrate with. But I think I've chosen for you. This is a fun combination. However, I could do this instead. And maybe go with a little green today. So you guys could say, <laughs> and then I could do blues as well. So we got blues, greens, and pinks. You guys choose and I will do what you ask. Shows are exhilarating because I get to hug you guys and be really close. I have a table and everyone sits around me and I'm the entertainment in a different way, showing you everything that our creative feet are capable of. And you like the pinkish? Oh boy, we got it mixed. Oh, we got all three. You know what, this one is this one's cut. We're ahead of the game. You never know though what I may do because I haven't demonstrated at a show since the beginning of CVID. <laughs> and so I ha I'm out of practice and I thought, well, instead of just practicing, I may as well practice with you guys. Is this sound like a good idea? Let's see how this camera's looking. Well, that one's in the wrong spot. Hmm. Let's let's do an adjustment here real quick. And when the reason everything is discombobulated is because we did painting for two weeks. And 
again if you're wondering if I finished. I did not finish. So how I like to start is to show you the three creative feet. This is Satin Edge and this is Sequins and Ribbon. And we've been putting them together and getting our inventory ready for the show. So you'll be able to pick them up at the actual show if you already have them. This is the Pearls and Piping Foot. Now these three feet are capable of doing over 88 different sewing techniques. That's a lot, isn't it? And they also attach to all sewing machines because we give you adapters inside of the package. And we stole all inventory out of my table. So I don't have a package on my table to show you. And inside of the kit is a little instruction booklet that explains what to use the foot for. And then if you're wondering if it attaches to perhaps your Bernina sewing machines, it does by use of the Bernina low shank adapter, which is what you see here. And this is used in addition to our white adapter that comes in the kit. However, you can also use the Bernina snap-on adapter. And then these then in turn snap on to the feet. <laughs> That's too heavy for it. So if you have a standard universal snap-on foot machine, our feet will likely just attach to your sewing machine without any additional guides. And then, whoop, oh, that camera is way off. There we go. And then you just lower your snap-on adapter and it snaps right on. The Satin Edge foot is a foot I, I developed or invented for a blind and deaf seamstress who was taking classes at the Braille Institute when we met back in the early or the mid 80s. And then this foot was not adjustable for her. I actually made about six different feet for her and modified her sewing machine using acrylic for fingernails, raised all the things on her machine to make it Braille so that she could feel her sewing machine settings. And that, that was the beginning of needle threaders that were automatic, the Janome 5001 sewing machine, at that time called the New Home sewing machine. So the satin edge foot, all by itself, does top stitching, edge stitching, pin tucking, invisible applique, applique stitching, and a ditch charted needle design without the use of knitting needles, cut work without the use of a hoop, wire edges, fishing line edges, lettuce edging, trapunto applique, blanket stitch applique, edge joining, t-shirt hemming, eighth inch, quarter inch, scant quarter inch seam allowances. And it also can hand sew for you. So you can hand sew binding on your quilts and not see stitching on either side. That is done in conjunction with our invisible thread, which we should have at the shows because they finally got in touch with me, my supplier. So, feeling good about that. We are still unsure about some other products because the company we buy these threads from or winds this, the thread for us is YLI and they sold, the owner retired. So I have a paint, a red bobbin in the uh, sewing machine right now. Hello, Amy and Amy will be in the booth. Right, Amy? Give me a thumbs up if you, we haven't spoken since you agreed to do the show. I'm hoping you haven't changed your mind. And everybody's looking forward to seeing you there. Uh, should I do red or should I do another color? This is not the time when you'd want to use an 80 weight bobbin. The deco bob thread is 80 weight and it means it's thinner. I need to put that blade away. 
when you do a satin stitch on the edge of the fabric, and this is a non-treated, just a single layer of quilting cotton, and I'm going to stitch a satin stitch right on the edge of the fabric. The reason I developed this foot was because the serger had just come out, and I had already been teaching this wonderful woman. Her name was Mary. I had already been teaching her for about a year on machine use. What color thread? Will green satisfy those that wanted green? I'm still sore, but I'm so much better than I was. Now that my bone is no longer twisted and separated in my arm. Do I have a regular bobbin laying around? I think I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna use the 80 weight because I don't want you to wait while I wind a bobbin. This is something I need to do before the show. Wind some bobbins. You're looking forward to it? We're gonna be in the green building and this show is the quiltcraftsew.com show. I um, can't remember. It used to be called the Rusty Barn. Well, can't find the end of that bobbin. Give me a thumbs up if you've seen me at a show before. Tell people what it's like. Is that how I met you? Oh my my. You know what? I'm gonna just leave the I'm gonna leave the red bobbin in there and put green thread. This will give you an idea of what it looks like when you don't have your threads match. Oh, the whole thread dispensers on this. Some of you are waiting for thread dispensers now that we're trying to get that dealt with before we leave and I'd like to be able to bring some with me to the show as well. If you're waiting on a presser, this the I I was a presser mechanic or a lathe mechanic yesterday and fixed the lathe. I was so proud of myself. <laughs> Never done that before. So had to replace the switch and service the motor. And it's good to go. So if you're waiting on a presser, you can expect a tracking number very soon. Okay, here we go. This is best done with a 40 weight, high quality polyester rayon or, I mean, you can actually accomplish this with any thread, but you'll have a better experience if your thread is a higher quality because your sewing machine will have a better time sewing it. Better, better. Oh my my. This is the longest I've ever gone without doing a show. Put down. Do you know where which show you were at, Susan? Everybody missed you last week, Amy. You got people worried about you. All right, so how this works, it'll be easier for you to see it with a solid piece of fabric underneath. You select a zigzag stitch. The width is up to you, but I'm gonna use a three and a half. And you turn the handle towards you until the needle comes down in the right swing of the needle. If you're not sure if it's in the right swing then do turn the handle till you see it swings left and then with the needle down on the right swing of the zigzag stitch you turn the nut on this foot until the wire on the foot which is right here till that wire is touching 
the sewing machine needle with the needle down you actually want it to touch okay, I'm so far from my sewing machine and then before you begin you're going to turn the handle to make sure that you actually didn't bend the needle. I don't know why I have the machine so far from me, but I need to bring it closer because my arms are short, which I'm constantly reminded by my roommates how short I am. How many roommates does it take to change light bulbs in a ceiling fan that is really high? All three of us. If I can get this camera closer. There we go. So turning the handle toward you until the needle swings left and right. Then we're placing the guide so that the wire, that pin on the foot, is off the edge of the fabric. And now the stitch will be formed over the wire and we shorten the stitch length to the desired like your, your desired length. <laughs> You're in cold Montana. Ooh. You know, my family, we had a, we had a horse farms in Montana. My dad told me about that. So you can see the stitches kind of close together, but not as close as I would like. And this is what I generally will show at a show <laughs> is how does a blind person sew in the first place? Well, you need to have a foot that you can rely on. And this is me relying on the presser foot. And even if I try to make the fabric go away from the foot, it it kind of brings it back in front of the sewing machine needle. So you could sometimes I leave the machine running slow, and then I go to the ladies' room and come back, and the machine is still sewing, and all the customers are around going, "Look at that!" And this is not an embroidery machine. This is just a regular sewing machine. So the most guiding you'll do is one finger guiding on the left hand side of the of the sewing machine needle, just making sure the guide is always touching the edge of the fabric. And this is the magic of the satin edge foot, that it does this writing for you. You can see how beautiful that stitch is. How cold is it in Montana right now? too much in front of me okay so you can keep on going notice my hands are not touching at all and as I was showing you before if I try to pull it away it pulls it back and if you're curious as to whether or not we can turn a corner yes we can and I'll go ahead and do that for you Let me see something here. Where's the close tight? Oh, there you are. There we go. So all the way to the end of the fabric and then take your reverse button and back it up a little bit. I don't think I'm all the way to the end. There's this little shelf in front of me that I think I'm gonna need to just take off of my cabinet. Lift the foot, and then you'll see the fabric raises with the foot. That's because the stitch is actually wrapped around the guide. 
Then you just push the fabric away from you until it drops off and you're able to then spin the fabric around. I like to have the thread be to the to the right side of the guide when I turn a corner. And then increase your stitch length a little bit. So right now it's at 0 0.4. I'm taking my length to 0 0.6 and that gives the sewing machine a little bit extra or the feed dogs move a little bit more and that then gets you up and over the stitch that you already formed. It's about six degrees. <laughs> and then shorten your stitch length back down again. So you always want to make sure that you pay attention to the stitch that you had it set before you increase stitch length to turn corners. <laughs> I'm not able to follow all of the feed, but you can see the stitch all the way along the edge. And if you've ever tried, have any of you ever tried, I think you should today, no matter who you are, Try to sew a zigzag stitch right on the edge of the fabric without my foot. Use a traditional satin stitch foot and see what happens. And you'll note that your fabric will get pulled in by the stitch. And your, even if your fabric is straight, it will end up being wavy. And that's because the fabric will get tunneled under. It'll get curled up inside the stitch. And... Uh, so when this foot released, it was revolutionary to the sewing industry and still is my best seller. Now what do I normally do? Now I usually am asked about applique and I say, yes, you can applique with this. And I don't do a real fancy job. Just take a piece of fabric and cut it in a funny shape. So I'm going to do that because it worked for years. Have any of you ever done applique before, satin stitch, and had trouble? Do you ever feel as though something must be wrong with me because I can't get my stitch to be off the edge? Another non-treated, just a piece of fabric, and I'm just going to cut this random shape. so hard for me to waste fabrics that I like. <laughs> that shows people always go, what are you going to use the, what are you going to use or make out of all these fabrics? And I go, just going to make a bunch of little shapes and throw it all away. No, people have actually asked me to take the fabric So at the end of the day, I let people grab samples and take them. And sometimes I let people take the samples all together. So here I have nothing and nothing, just nothing holding this together. And the stitch is already set. I pushed a different button and the wrong camera popped up. <laughs> yeah, I used to say, if all you have is a zigzag stitch, tonight you have a sewing machine capable of doing 88 different things. When you left today, it was just able to do one thing. Now it can do all these other things. This is why I have a book and a instructional video as well to support that. And we have launched the Creative Feed Extensive course, which is taking an even deeper dive into sewing. Another thing that you can do is use the liquid base glue. Oh no. And put the glue on the bottom. I'm definitely going to have to get that. Okay. I never thought I'd be nervous to do a show, but how many years has it been since I've done one now? This is four years. I'm definitely more clumsy than I was. Where'd you go, Blue? Today's my friend's birthday. So I 
have somewhere to go after. Where'd the glue go? I better not be dropping things at the show. I would, I'm not saying that you should applique with nothing, but it's nice to know that you can. And you can also, in a pinch, use the liquid based and just put some drops on the back side of your fabric. Now we are probably not going to have the glue for all of, I don't know, I hate to say it. I'm hoping that the glue will be there. We'll have enough for all three days. If not, we do ship. So then I just very, very lightly brush my hand across that. And now the fabric is held in place. However, you should use the stabilizers. One that we offer is the Fuse and Fuse Stabilizer, which gives you a very soft finish. Same settings, zigzag stitch. I don't know, this camera looks like everything's red instead of pink. Bring, it had problems with red too, didn't it, last week or two weeks ago? The stitch length is, an, is up to you as well, again. Another thing that we, that I recommend is a hold light on the back side of the fabric to stop it from puckering. And I haven't lowered my thread tension. I'm gonna go ahead and do that now. Take it from a 4.0 to a 3.0 and sew to the end. foot pressure is already reduced. So this is not going to be perfect because I'm not doing it the right way. But this is how I do it at a show. Lift, pull off the pin, turn, place the guide so that it sits off the edge. And as long as the guide wire or guide pin is on the edge of the fabric, so is your outside swing. Have you ever turned a corner, lowered the needle, lift the foot, turn the fabric, lower the foot, then turn the hand wheel, and then your needle's swinging out in the wrong position? How about you then start to sew and you get loops of thread on the bottom? Has that ever happened to you? If it has, say loops or loopy. These are caused by turning the hand wheel backwards when you realize your needle is not where you want it to go. Are you going to admit that you've turned your hand wheel backwards ever? And if you have, I'd love to hear about it in the chat. And I'm going to increase stitch length again on the corner for just a few stitches. Watch and make sure that it feeds through. Did I re increase it? Yeah. Oh, I'm so sore from yesterday. And then shorten the stitch length back down again. And you can see that it's the fabric is kind of wavy. And that is because I have not stabilized the fabric. You want to make sure you do. So in as far as the stitch is wide. And stop with the needle up, lift, push off the wire, turn. Those words may sound funny to you. I'm saying to stop with the needle up. If you've ever been told to always lower your needle before turning, that's gonna sound odd to you. But if you lower the needle, you can't pull the fabric out because the stitch is wrapped around the little guide on the foot. So you have to leave the needle up. Yay, so much easier. So with the needle up, 
I turned and now I don't have to check my hand, my needle position because as long as the guide is off the fabric's edge, so is my needle because you set it up that way before you start. Then you don't have to keep checking every time you make a move. Then instead of looking at the sewing machine needle, your eye is focused right here on the white part of the guide and your job is to keep the fabric right along the edge of that. So right here is where you look. This camera's all shaky. I'll try to keep it from moving. So focusing right here and we just keep bringing the fabric back to the guide. This is definitely done better with stabilizer. Lower the needle, lift, and then turn, but you don't have to turn the hand wheel. I'm sitting cockeyed as well. You should be sitting in front of your needle, not Oops, what I hit. Not like I am. See, I you can't tell because of the way I have the camera positioned that I am literally sitting beside my sewing machine. So I have the camera at an angle because I don't want to teach you to sit inappropriately or unhealthy. Oh, I need my elbow pad. <sighs> so elbow down, looking at the front of the foot and Center yourself with your needle. Be in front of your machine, not beside it. And you would normally be watching your sewing machine, not watching a camera. The fact that I can do that is because I can feel the fabric hit the guide, so I don't have to watch as much. And this is how those who are physic visually challenged are able to use our feet because their fingers are a lot more sensitive than yours are. So when the fabric comes around and hits the guide, that little tap that it feels, they can feel it much better than anyone with perfect vision would be able to. Now I'm gonna to switch to a blanket stitch because generally that's the next question I get asked is can you use this for a blanket stitch? And yes, you can. Hey, I'm remembering what to say. I won't have all this camera in front of me at the show. The Creative Feed Extensive is the course where everything is brought together. And for instance, I won't just teach you how to applique. I'm gonna teach you how to applique on cotton. Then I'm gonna teach you how to applique minky on regular fabric. I may even go as far as to teach you how to put leather on a sweatshirt this is the Creative Feed Extensive. I'm gonna be taking you through all of my techniques and then diving into the pool of all the different ways we can use those techniques. And that course has launched, but it's not too late to join as we just had our meet and greet. When I get back from the shows, we'll, I'll be releasing the schedule for the course and then we'll likely close the sign up and so there's a limit to how many of you I want to have in the course at a time. All right, where am I? And this is something that I do. I will be doing live events on in the course after each section. We'll have a live chat as well and me at the sewing machine. So if you have questions, if you run into any difficulties, then I am able to address it. Kind of like having me in a classroom with you. So I'm selecting a blanket stitch now and trying to figure out which camera <laughs> to look at. So many cameras. And the blanket stitch is a stitch that sews stitch, stitch, stitch over, stitch, stitch over. It will look like half of a ladder on your screen and the points or the single throngs go out this way, not that way. If you have a mirror option, you can switch things as well. I'm taking my width on my machine from a 3.5 to a 2.5 and I'm increasing the length from 2.5 to 4.0 because I really like it that way and that's the only reason. Then I'm lowering the needle so that my guide is off the fabric's edge and 
or not the guide, the needle is off the edge. So you lower the needle and you know that it's right on the edge. Then you turn the hand wheel until the needle or the guide touches the right side of the needle. So this is the opposite of how we set it up for blanket stitch. I mean for applique, satin stitch applique. I can't see it all. I have this camera right in front of my line of sight. Pushing toward the foot. So you have the ability to vary the width and the length of your stitches if your sewing machine will allow you. I'm going to show you now our petite machine applique. Petite machine applique is something you've probably never heard of unless you've already got my, inst my instructions. Changing the width of a zigzag stitch from a wider stitch to a 1.0 width. This is so small that you might not be able to even see the needle swing left and right. And it's once again, we don't swing over the guide on these this particular technique. With the needle in the right swing, we then move the guide over to the right side of the needle again. Once you know that it's touching, then we know we can rely on it to guide straight. And we look right here, not back here at the needle. Watch right there. And so, whoops, shorten the stitch length down to the satin stitch setting. And I'm using a 0 0.04 stitch length now with a 1.0 width. And I'm way off on the, I'm too far. I got, I didn't set it up right. Let me try again. <laughs> I'm probably going to have to change my position of this camera. So I can see what I'm doing. There we go. And use my glasses. I was bad about that. I always want to make sure that the thread is under the toe and to the left. Oh yeah, I was, is that the right swing? No, that's the left swing. So with the needle in the right swing, you lower your needle and then move the guide over. I was too far out. This fabric is also really cheap. This is a This is a dollar for a fat quarter from Joann's. If you're ever going to use a fabric like that, you'd want to stabilize it. And I also like to use spray starch. Oh, that's not a good camera angle. I had it off. Well, it's been years since I've done a whole demo. Can't thank you guys enough for letting me play with you, but. That's, that's usually what I do and then I throw it, no I don't, I do, I show you how to do binding really quick. Have you ever bound a quilt and struggled to get your stitches not to show? I don't have my invisible thread out. You're in luck though, I have an hour long video on how to bind a quilt from start to finish and not see a stitch on either side and I can take this down and show you an up close look at how nice the binding looks and you get mitered corners on both top and bottom so if you haven't seen this technique know that this is 100% machine sewn. Not one bit was ever done with a hand sewing needle. So it's really, really fast to bind a quilt now instead of having to deal with hand sewing. And if you don't want stitches to show on the top or the bottom, this is ideal. Where are all your so sarcastic sisters? I don't know. 
You weren't here last week and they're missing out this week. It's 243. See, I take too long on the satin edge foot. You can also use this foot for top stitching, edge stitching, and pin tucking. And you do that by simply moving the guide away from the needle. The distance you choose is exactly and precisely how far your seam or your stitching line will be from that. Well, I do plan on doing a VIP on Tuesday of next week, Amy. So maybe you can hang out with them then. Maybe people got confused and thought I was going to be gone this week. I don't know. So you bring, now you know how they felt when you didn't show up last week. They missed you. So I moved my guide away from the needle and then you just push toward the foot. Do I have my speed control reduced? Nope. It's just I'm wearing boots. There we go. See how accurate that is? And that's the same thing for an edge stitch as well. So you have the ability to do to sew single and double rows. You can also integrate, use a double needle or even a triple needle with the satin edge foot to sew right along the edge of sleeves or around plackets and other times when you want a top stitch. Now I'm going to show the pearls and piping foot. <laughs> I'm going to be like taking a bunch of samples down and taking them to the show and then I, uh, coming back I'm going to have to figure it all out. Woo. The pearls and piping foot I developed for someone who had a severe case of rheumatoid arthritis and she was actually sewing for a bridal manufacturer because back in the day women at home were sewing for factories especially when the project required a zigzag stitch because a lot of the factories only had straight stitch machines so they would contact sewing machine dealers and ask, hey, do you got any sewers that are really good and want to make some extra money? And we had a binder like this thick. I can't believe I said like. <laughs> About this thick. And we had women all over the United States in this book. Some of them and broke it down by their, their quality, whatever they were really good at, and would connect manufacturers with these ladies that would then make extra money. And that was a long time ago, you guys. There weren't cell phones and there weren't company sites like Etsy. This is my last spool of the quilt highlights, which is going out today in someone's order. So sorry we don't have that anymore. These are pre-strung pearls. And the year these came out on a string was the year I met the lady that had, that I made the pearls and piping foot for. Now, when these came out, we were using zipper feet and we just take our finger and push against the foot like that. And then the beads would feed through. And the situation that I had with this lady was that she couldn't open her hands. She hand sewed for so many years doing this, that her hands became locked in that position. This is one of the reasons why I'm always looking for a way to not hand sew after meeting her and seeing how hard she struggled. This is the short story of this foot and now I'm going to show you how I used the foot. I engineered the tunnel for her 
because she couldn't guide it in any way. So the guide had to be 100%. You don't have to touch it in order for it to sew without the needle striking those pearls. And let's see here. Let's see if I can get a good angle of this. It's a little bright. So this tunnel is a patented tunnel. <laughs> Nobody that's copied me, and they've all copied me, has ever made a foot with the shape of tunnel. And I also have this little washer on the foot. So if you were to go to one company, the first company that copied me was Janome, and they actually made two feet to try to do what this one foot does. And with this one foot, you can sew every size of bead and every size of piping. You can go from 16th inch cording to the size of my arm, because <laughs> I have a trick. That will be covered in the Creative Feet Extensive. I'm using a zigzag stitch. The, ch the width that I know will swing on both sides of the beads, which is a a millimeter wider than the bead itself and the bead is two and a half millimeters wide so a three and a half millimeter swing should clear the pearls if not then you can either increase the width of your stitch or take the foot off and slide this little washer to the opposite side and that washer then will move the trim over so that your sewing machine will clear it When I sew on a edge of a fabric though, I do increase the stitch width. It's easier on the fabric itself. You do work for a gentleman that does collage frat, frat, frat <laughs> fraternities. And it's all zigzag. I don't know what that is. Are you are you doing the little pocket things? I know I have a couple client or a couple customers that are doing that. Sewing the little pocket squares. This is me sewing the pearls on the edge of the fabric. Now the reason I can let go is because I already have the satin stitch on the edge, and the satin stitch and the pearls take up the entire tunnel. So you could sit there and leave the room. If you do this long enough. <clears throat> if you have a piece long enough and you have a need for this, the actual act of sitting there at the sewing machine is eliminated. Now when beaded edge lace came out, they were all making it with this foot on industrial sewing machines. And they had a winder back here that would wind the fabric up. And they didn't have a person at the sewing machine. They had a person at five sewing machines. And I rigged it up so that they could flip a switch and hop to the next machine and rig it and so they could make this and they charged so much. I'm not even finishing my sentences. <laughs> so they actually had, I think they charged $8 a yard for beaded lace back then. And we're talking, I was 20. So if I just turned 61, that's 41 years ago. 41 years ago. Do you know what machine we set up? The Foff is a little Foff sewing machine. This is my history, you guys. Isn't that beautiful? Can you imagine finishing the edge of a little girl's dress that way? I did that for my, my daughter's christening gown. Now I'm gonna show you something fascinating. If I can find an invisible bobbin. It's called in, inlaid beading. Have any of you tried it? If you already have the feet and you saw the instructions and went, that's crazy, I'm not doing that. You need to be brave and try. 
I got some bobbins already done. Invisible thread is is four thousandths in diameter, and it's the one that we carry, not just any invisible thread. The one that we offer is one hundred percent nylon. There we go. I also sell the lingerie thread. These are two nylon threads that are fantastic. They have specific qualities that are important, especially if you're going to do lingerie or leotards, works, work with bridal. These are threads that work great for that. And also, if you get into heirloom sewing, you'll also benefit from the nylon thread. I'll never forget when I taught Nancy Zeman how to, oh, not her. It's Martha Pullen. She was uh, teaching the double needle pin tuck. And then I showed her nylon thread in the bobbin, brings the two needle threads together and makes your pin tucks raise even higher. And yes, some heirloom sewing will be covered in the Creative Feet Extensive as well. Entredeau is sewn on with our sequins and ribbon foot like nothing you've ever seen before. I can't believe I just said that. I don't think I've ever said that before. <laughs> okay, so I have invisible thread in the bobbin. Why? I thought you couldn't sew with invisible thread in the bobbin. Have you ever heard that? Don't listen to them. They're wrong. You can sew with, with it in the bobbin. And you can also sew upside down and have your fabric Oh, I was going to show you. I got distracted. Let me show you this. See what it looks like on the bobbin? Because I had a red in the bobbin and a green in the needle. That's kind of cool. Kind of blends nicely with what's on top, doesn't it? But if I hadn't, then I would just have a green on the bottom that matches the green on the top. So here I have just a single layer of fabric with the right side facing down. And you can take a marker and draw any type of design you want on the wrong side of the fabric. Take your pearls or any other round trim that if you push down on it will not flatten out and raise the foot. Put it beneath the fabric out of your view. Now, before we did this, we made sure that the pearls, the foot was in line with the pearls. Make sure your foot is, make sure the pearls are able to pull. So you see how they're able to slide? Then you know it's in the tunnel. And now my hands are away from the pearl. And I couldn't, I can't see them anyway. They're underneath the fabric. My finger is guiding the line, guiding the fabric, so that the line that I drew on the fabric goes to the tunnel on the foot. This takes courage. Are you, are you courageous enough to try this? And I can't even see because I got that camera in front of me. I'm gonna switch to that, but I'm looking at the line right now making sure it's entering the front door of the foot. Each of the creative feet allow you to take your eye off the needle and onto the foot. This makes you more accurate. The bobbin thread is 100% nylon, 4 thousandths in diameter, invisible thread. Monofilament is another term for it. Ellen's here. She's one of the sarcastic sisters. She's not in here all the time. Or are you usually hiding in the background? Welcome, Ellen. And Tuesday at 2 is the next VIP live, you guys. We'll see how good I do. So you can see how hard I am, how difficult it is to keep the beads in the tunnel. I'm going to draw a little bit more of a line and show you the other camera angle so you can see. Uh, this pen is almost dried up. Hmm. 
See, there's no visual on those beads that are underneath. And I've drawn a line, but it's, the pen is so bad. So if you have a line drawn, you just center that line with the tunnel as you're sewing. The pearls are trapped in there. They can't escape. Keeping your eye focused in the front of the foot. And if you're looking here, you can see the pearls are actually coming out the side here. The foot will gather up the pearls and tuck them in and bring them back into that guide. This is not something you can do with any of the other copies of my foot. They have a U-shaped tunnel, so the, pearl, the pearls are just able to wander around inside of their tunnel. <laughs> yes, you are sarcastic at times. I promise, eventually, I'll figure out how to give you guys badges and... I'm, I'm gonna, I have not forgotten that I'm gonna make that t-shirt idea for you guys. And if you're wondering why I'm talking about this, we do have the, the VIP group and also people just hang out here in the live so much that they become friendly. Some people don't like live feeds, and I apologize if you are, no, I don't. If you don't like live feeds, you got fast forward and pause and rewind. All right, so what you don't know is that the beads are now in the fabric instead of on it, and that's why I call it inlaid beading, because the beads are now below the surface of the fabric, which makes this really good for children's clothing. And what I should have done on my daughter's christening gown Poor thing had a rash from the pearls. That gives you an idea how long the pearls have been out, been out for about 35 years. It's my daughter's birthday is any day. So they're tucked in there. It's very attractive, nice bridal technique. In fact, for those of you who are in, into bridal, you can use this technique for darts if you want to do a princess cut to form the bodice around the figure you can carve into the fabric using this instead of doing a straight dart and trying to line up your darts just right and uh, there uh, there have been i had my needle thread tension too low so you're not able to see the the pearls in some areas i would have to manipulate this what's i going to show you it's been so long since I've done a show. Piping is usually what I show next. Do I have any rat tail cording? I can show this kind. I'll show the big one. I just had piping out here. Odds are it's on the floor. <laughs> it is. What's on your sewing table? And for those of you who don't know that I'm going to be hitting the road, going to two different shows, one in Phoenix, Arizona, and the other in Albuquerque, New Mexico. Wendy, you are late. I did a couple bridal techniques. You missed out. Oh, I want to do... I'm going to show you something really cool. <laughs> this is the problem. I, I had no idea how long I could go. And if you want to see a real comprehensive demo, I did film a six and a half hour video on the creative feat. Talk about patient. You have to be patient for that. Oh, there it is. I have to cut fabric for the show. 
and I don't know which one to use. So Tuesday at 2, you guys, 2 Arizona time. That was a really bad cut. Oh, yeah, I'm going to bring the piping rulers with me and the glue and those needle threaders, Amy, in case. And I'm going to try really hard to have some thread dispensers. I know you were wanting one of those. So you can cut any shape. You can use scraps for piping. Because we have a ruler that you lay on top and you cut and trim after you make your own cording. I need to take this invisible thread out, I think. I feel like I would leave it in and show you two things. But I can't remember what it is. I appreciate the no uh uh ums as well. I was watching something today and I'm I wanted to take her course, but I don't know if I can handle it. Too many too many ums. I might end up start saying it if I if I take the class, I may end up with a problem with it. But I feel for her. Hey, right, here's a glow in the dark green. That's usually what I use it shows so you guys can see it better. A real bright neon color. And this one's 40 weight. And I'm looking at the spool right over there going, ha ha. I know where it is. This was very wasteful of me. Oh my goodness. I'm so much better than I was, you guys. On my arm. I'm using a right needle position and you move your needle over to the side of the piping. I have to remember how to use my machine. So if this is, pretend this is the cording. <laughs> I had this lady go, what are you doing? What is this? I'm like, oh, that's the needle. So when my finger goes like that, I'm referring to the needle. This is the piping. And you move your needle over until it's right off the edge of the cording. That's what this is. And when you put it in fabric, it is corded piping. What is piping? What is just regular piping? Tell me in the chat. See if you know. I have music playing in my head. And it isn't the chicken dance. <laughs> Thank goodness. Now I'm going to increase stitch length to help this thickness of, see how thick that is? Do you see? And you might think, I can't sew that because the fabric isn't, or the foot is not even on the sewing machine, but you can. Now the trick is to get something this thick beneath the foot. See if I can move this camera a little bit. Get close tight. There we go. You take your your presser foot bar and raise it up and if you if you see my foot is up but you don't see any change in the foot raising you have to then you have to then raise this and hold it up up uh, like that you see how i went higher i had an extra inch now I'll show you what that looks like on the side so raise that up see how much higher that goes now i can slide it beneath Now, if the fabric doesn't feed at all, then you would increase your stitch length. The longer the stitch length, the more the fabric pulls 
and my goal now is to just kind of keep the fabrics together. So we got Wendy, Amy, and Ellen. Three of you are in here. And if I have not included any of you as one of the So Sarcastic Sisters, it's because you're nicer to me than they are. I'm just kidding. <laughs> They've been teaching me how to be sarcastic. If you've ever done the personality test, INF, the, the, they have letters representing your personality. I'm an INFP. And apparently, I miss a lot of jokes. I gotta get this camera out of my way. I can't see. And I also need to be seated in front of the of it for this. And I'm not pulling, I'm just guiding because there's a really long piece, which is silly because I'm gonna cut it because I don't I'm gonna need this for the shows. There we go. I always hear Lucille Ball singing in my head when I say the words, have you ever, have you ever, da, da, da. <laughs> and my, I forget what I'm going to say when my brain thinks of it. <laughs> silly, silly. If you haven't done that personality test, it's fun. It's free. Just look for personality tests and it takes a while to finish it. So to get that to sew into the seam without having a problem, use a piping ruler that we have at creativefeet.com. Invented by my friend Linda McGee from Gee's. You may have seen this under another brand and that's simply a knockoff of her product. It's not to say that she didn't authorize it, but I like to buy direct from the inventor, being an inventor myself. And it has different size slots so that you can set it and slide along the piping. Excuse me, my, I'm getting the sniffles. I think it's time to do a air filtration treatment in here. So then you can just cut and slide and cut and slide and end up with a beautiful piping that you didn't have to work hard to do. And I need another piece of fabric. What do I usually do? I do something else. Oh well. By the end of the show, I'll, I'll be good to go again. Now, you can labor to keep all those edges together or use the glue. If you're making a bag or a pillow, I would generally, I never say always about anything because I, if there's anything that's constant about me is I'm always not consistent, except for binding. You, you need to be consistent on the process of that. Very light touch, and then you lay your piping down. But know this, how many layers of fabric are we really trying to get to sew together? Are we trying to get three? Or are we trying to get four? We're really trying to get four. So you wanna get the two piping layers also to behave like one. Something is making me 
itch as well in here today. And I haven't handled any pipe, any batting, so it's not that. Could just be some plant I don't have near my house. I know some plants do release stuff in the winter when you wouldn't expect it. So now I have all these layers connected to each other and if you let them dry then nothing will shift on you. And I'm not going to let it dry because you know, you know, you guys don't want to wait for it to dry. I know you. And what am I using? Which camera? This one. Whoops. Well, that one is not where it was. Oh yeah, I remember moving it now. All right. Once again, we raise the foot higher to get this beneath it. And even though it hasn't dried, it's still just staying together pretty well. I have people ask me all the time, can you dry? I mean, is it okay to sew through that wet? And at shows, I all day long sew through it wet. Why is everyone so quiet? I don't know. Get bossy. Maybe I'm not entertaining enough. See how beautiful that is? But that's not all we can do. We can also sew pearls on the edge, which I would normally do, but I'm not going to because I have to be careful not to go too long today because it's my friend Terry's birthday and she's special. You know how special she is. So we are going to go out for sushi and karaoke. I have to do some sneaky stuff before we get together. What do I normally show? I think that's enough to sell people on the pearls and piping foot at a show. Would that be enough? Or is there something that I do with the, oh yeah, I know what it is. Are you ready for this? <laughs> I think I'm excited to come to the show. There was a period of time when I thought I'd never do shows again. I let, I had a lot of people get really sad when I said that. I need to cut fabric. But not, oh, I remember what the invisible thread was for now. Oh well. Have you ever tried to gather fabric and had your thread break? Increasing sew a stitch. <laughs> Come on, Claire. I'm going to secure the beginning of the stitch. So a few stitches forward, a few stitches back. It's actually seven methods of gathering with this foot. So if gathering has been a, a challenge for you, Know that it's, it's no longer a challenge if you have the recipe and the foot. We want to center the needle in the tunnel of the foot, in front of the tunnel. I had it over for piping, now I'm bringing it back to the center. So a few stitches forward, a few stitches back. I've already done that. Increase your thread tension all the way up to nine. There's another sarcastic sister. There you go. All you had to do was wish for everyone to join you, Amy. All right, tension all the way to the top, length all the way to the longest. And then you just sew and the fabric also, reducing foot pressure allows it to gather more as well. But you don't have to stick your finger back here like you do with the so-called gathering feet that are offered. 
It's a pearls and piping foot again, and it automatically gathers up my fabric. I also have a way of gathering your fabric with two rows of stitching, and it automatically gathers. Yep, yep. See how nice that is? Perfect little Barbie skirt. Oh, now I remember. I would turn my little samples into Barbie skirts. Because I did a, I sewed with elastic, and we're going to switch now to the sequins and ribbon foot. This is me trying to remember how to do a show with your patience and guidance. I have some ribbon. Ow! There's a pin. <laughs> a hidden pin. I told you. This is why I don't use pins very much. They attack me. The sequins and ribbon foot is a unique foot to all copies of my foot. Yes, sewing machine companies love to copy me. And they did. I didn't copy them. It's the other way around. No snow here, yeah. Except for we're supposed to have weather next week, Wendy. I mean, Amy. Can you check your weather and see it, what it looks like down in Phoenix for Wednesday? Because Wednesday is set up. And I'll be in touch. I gotta remember what I'm doing. Oh yeah, that's what I would do. Okay, so I'm trying to remember what I, how I do a show so I know what to, to cut and get ready for. And at a show, I have a big pile of stuff all over my table becomes completely covered in samples. People like to take pictures of my table and share them and go, look at the mess. But that's because I demonstrate a lot faster at a show than I am here. Do you want to see that gather up close? And what is really neat about it is it's not a ruffle, it's a gather. That means you can ease and adjust your gathers. This is the bobbin thread, so you can draw it up even tighter. I love asking this at a show where I'm demonstrating to teachers and uh, one of the things that I ask is, what's the difference between a gather and a ruffle? I have a feeling Amy knows. Am I right? Come on, Claire. All I need is a little piece of fabric. Here we go. My back just popped. <laughs> Negative 18. Yeesh. I was complaining about 20s. <laughs> it felt really cold though. It was in the 20s and they said it was, it felt like 17. The coldest I ever was was in Denver during a teardown. It was night, it was dark, and negative 17. And, a, and the wind was blowing sideways. Ugh. It was a rough, it was a rough tear down. Now what I usually show is, I can't remember. <laughs> I think I generally, yeah, I do that. Having a conversation with myself. Well, all the people at the show, thank you now for how much better I'll be at the show because you guys let me use you as a guinea pig to remember how to do shows. Here's a time when I use the glue to join the fabrics together. This is reminiscent of four shows ago where I showed you how to make a pillow uh, embellishing while piecing. 
but you can also use this to make Barbie dresses really fast. So if you are, if you have children around and you need to, you want them to learn how to sew Barbie skirts together, this is a really nice way to get them started. See, that's a little sarcastic, isn't it? Her being happy that you're freezing and she's not. So, positioning some dots of the liquid based on the fabric. Sorry, I was my hand was in the way. Then slide your finger across and take your next fabric. And you can shape this any way you want. You, you could actually have it curve for a, a more couture looking Barbie skirt and then you just overlap it so the the little one or yourself doesn't have to actually be good at sewing seams now we can use ribbon or any type of trim that you want that will fit in the guide now we have other guides though we have different size openings for the diff for the same foot and the third one is the eighth inch accessory guide which has a round hole for yarn I'm going to take and move these aside and insert some ribbon into the foot making sure that the right side is facing up and slide it into the tube on the foot I got my arm around the camera let's see go and then you can select any type of stitch that you want oh, there's so many things you can do this is why the creative feed extensive is is going to take a few months to complete so there are countless ways of using each foot I'm using a feather stitch it is the most common stitch used for crazy quilting but you can use a double needle as well so both sides of this oh i didn't change the stitch uh. well part of it will just have one stitch and then you sew and if the stitch is not balanced I'm getting the camera ready to show you. So much different the color is. This is really a hot pink. <laughs> uh, my foot control moved. So if your stitch is balanced on the ribbon, you don't need to do anything. But what if part of the stitch is falling off the ribbon and part is going on? Then you have the nut adjustability to move the trim to the position you need. Oh. Keep your eye on the fabric right here in front of the foot. Not the needle. I started looking at the needle. So you can see where I was consistently not correct right here. This is how you do it. And this is how you don't do it. This is how you do it. When you don't look at the needle, this is what happens when you do look at the needle. But you could position it to be that way because you like how it looks. Now I'm going to go ahead and sew elastic. I can find it. Where's my elastic? See, now I'm going to write a list of things I need to remember after the show today. I'm going to type all the things that I forgot. Just so grateful to have you with me as I stumble through remembering. I'm hoping I have elastic right here. I know I saw it recently. Pretty 
pretty sure I have some in here. If not, I don't want to take the time to look for it. So, and part of the problem, for those of you who don't know me, is that not only did I not do shows for three years, but I also moved. So I had certain cabinets that I kept certain things in and I moved and those things are being used for other things. And so I can't remember where it is. So what else can I do with the sequin or ribbon foot that will amaze you? The nice thing about using it for elastic is you don't have to stretch from behind the foot. And I hate to remind you of CVID, but during that time I created a video on how to make masks and we used elastic for the chin. Just one little piece of elastic, that's all I need. Oh, okay. Just so it's fantastic. And I'm going to show you a the Octi Hoop a little bit because then I go from the feet to the Octi Hoops. All right. I want to finish this pattern before next week so we can sell this at the show. Crossing fingers. And this is another one of my patterns is the bridesmaids purse. And this was the maid of honor one. It's the one I wore for my daughter's wedding. And it has pocket in there and it has that little pocket out here. So these are, this pattern is available on Creative Feet right now. Elastic. Hello, where are you? Ah, there's some elastic. <laughs> yay! Did any of you say yay with me? I'm going to show you baby elastic, fold over elastic. This is the kind of stuff I show at, show at sews. Show, sh Show it shows, that's right. I usually show this because this is traditionally what you would use for a Barbie skirt, which is your quarter inch elastic. I'm so excited. I wanted to show you this. How do you measure your elastic to fit your wrist? How do you do it, you guys? You take the elastic and you put it around your wrist. And decide how tight you want it to be because there isn't one magical elastic that fits everyone the same way and so you want to make sure that you plan for that and did you know that we used to use rubber from rubber trees for elastic did you ever have elastic start to smell really bad and rot and that was rubber from rubber trees so now we have synthetics yeah, but you, you got to make sure that this is going to fit that and where'd that go here it is. We're going to turn this into a skirt. Yes, we are. This is a little bit small. It's going to, it's not a Barbie size. I think I'm more corny than usual today. I would normally put it on this side and then it has this cute look. See how, how neat that is for a Barbie skirt? for a little girl or whomever. Ooh, I can do this. And then it has a sideways, like a side slit. That's so funny because I did a Barbie skirt video. I went on Cheryl Borden's show. What was that show called? Oh, no. oh yeah, I don't need you. Creative Living with Cheryl Borden is a video where I showed how to make Barbie skirt and someone goes, you're not making a Barbie skirt, you're just 
piecing things together and I, it ended up a Barbie skirt but uh, people are funny so what you do is you put it on your body but before you do you're gonna draw a line on your elastic and this part is waist so you're just gonna cut that and toss it after you put it on your wrist you'll decide how tight you want it to be and this is an itty bitty little tiny doll so here's the waist now you need to know is this elastic going to fit this fabric Keep pushing the wrong buttons. <sighs> Have you ever had a piece of elastic? You measured everything according to the pattern, and then the two ends didn't meet, and you had this gap? If you did, give me a thumbs up. Tell me, what did you do? Did you remove the elastic, or did you add a little piece and have a baggy outfit? I'm going to take and fold the elastic so that the two lines meet and then I'm yawning because I worked so many hours yesterday. I don't even want to know how many hours it was. And then we fold again. So I'll do that a little bit up close for you. You bring the two ends, this is the end, that's the real end, this is the waist, this is the other end, that's the size of the waist of this little doll. Then you bring the two ends together. Come on, Claire. And you're going to fold it again. So now we have a double fold and you mark the inside and the outside of all folds on the elastic. And that is how you can quadrant off with perfect math without using a measuring tape to, to know whether or not the elastic is going to fit the fabric. So on this, it would be if it was a garment for us, we would have a side seam we would have a tube, right? It would be sewing it into the waist. You would have a side seam and now you'd have to make it fit. But with a Barbie skirt or something little like this, you can't do that. The free arm isn't small enough. So pretend it's a garment. This is how you would handle it. Now you take and you bring your two, you would bring your seam allowances together and fold it again not covering up the seam allowance because that takes away from math and draw a line, draw a line, draw a line, and another line. Now you've quadrated off your fabric in equal sections as well. And before you begin, you're going to find out whether or not it's going to fit. No buttons at the show, no cameras at the show. <laughs> And we take and hold your finger and then stretch. And if that line does not meet this line, what do you do? You have to ease. So you see how I can stretch it and it meets? I'm good to go. So if the two lines don't meet and you have to ease your fabric, what is easing? Tell me what easing is. Tell you what, this would be a good this would be a good one for a prize, but we're not doing prizes right now. I got too much to think about in order to do a prize a giveaway right now. I'm using a three-step zigzag trico stitch or multiple zigzag stitch. And I'll draw a picture because 
I know some of you don't know what that is. You guys aren't answering my questions. Is it because you're not listening or you're wandering around and you're not watching? This is a three-step zigzag. One, two, three, one, two, three. Okay. Also known as the Trico stitch on a Bernina. Unless they've come out with it and they may have since then. They have the serpentine stitch, which is a a UE shape. A UE shape. Inserting the elastic, which I keep I don't know where I put it. Did I cut it that short? It's shorter than this? Is this it? This is it. I feel so goofy. All right, I'm gonna take and slide this in to the tube. And we wanna line up the first line on the elastic with the seam allowance. That requires looking down through the foot. And then you lower the presser foot. You want to make sure that your your foot is on. Sorry, I forgot I didn't have that other camera. You want to make sure your presser foot is on the elastic before I was doing something that I wanted freedom of movement. So I released the pressure from the presser foot. Now I want the pressure. So I'm going to my pressure setting, which could be up here in your machine. Mine's computer. So I have to go into the screen and I'm bringing it up from one to four. So now I have a lot of pressure on the presser foot and I can't lift that with my fingers anymore. <sighs> and that means you don't have to pull also from behind the foot. You want, to elast you want to add elastic to a lounge top because the bottom is too bulky. Ah. What is easing? That's what I was going to teach you. Easing is gathering. And I showed how to gather automatically. So you gather the fabric up and then you sew the elastic onto it after it's already gathered up. And that is the trick for that. I've had people actually sew elastic. I had a lady and she, she wrote me and she goes, you know what? I had some elastic and it was just, it lost its, its stretch. And she goes, I just slapped another piece on there and sewed it with your foot. And it, it allowed me to sew it right on top of the other one. That's a lot for your sewing machine to deal with. This has got to move this camera right here. Because I need my hand to be, I need to be centered, and so do you, in front of your needle. I wonder if I can get this one to see if I can give you a better view. So I'm going to take and stretch my elastic to this part right here and before doing that I also am increasing my stitch length to the max. I haven't put the stitch on yet. Where is it? There it is. If you have a baby lock it's 1-13 one, one and they actually call it the elastic two-step zigzag stitch. Increasing stitch length to the maximum, which is a 5.0 stitch length. Does that sound crazy? A minute ago, I had you take your tension all the way to the top and lower. I forgot what I was saying because the phone just rang. Okay. I lost my brain. I was like... That doesn't usually happen because I usually turn off my ringer. There we go. Oh, my baby girl just popped in. Oh, she posted a new video on TikTok. Oh, no, no. Oh, no, I'm not trying to do that. That's right. Go back to here. So last week, 
I did this, I accidentally tapped on something and my phone was no longer watching the video. And then I thought I was no longer on live, but I was. <laughs> you have no idea how hard it is to do live shows like this. And then you add buttons into the mix. Things have gotten so much better since I added this other camera, even though I don't really like the color it does. Maybe I can afford a, a new camera for this that doesn't... I can't see that it's not in focus, but till I bring it in for you guys to see. All right. So we just stretch the elastic until it meets the mark. And notice that I have not lowered my needle, that it is no stitch sewn. This is unique to the sequins and ribbon foot. All the sewing machine companies that copied my foot, their foot does not do this. There we go. So I just want to hold the thread. And the, if you need to center the elastic and the foot, you have the ability to do that by turning this nut. But your eye is focused on the t on the two lines where they meet, and then you just sew. And to show you that I'm not pulling from behind, I'm gonna sew a little bit more. And now I'll give you the close up again. Ugh, this camera. And there you have this finished edge at the same time, but we don't, I don't want that look, do you? So we're gonna go ahead now, we're gonna fold it under and under again. My thumb is almost normal, but not quite. I'm hoping it'll be normal by the time the show so now, I'm, this is crazy what I'm about to try. Let's see if I can get you to go and focus. Come on, camera, focus. Ugh, can't do that. Do this camera. See how I'm not even on the fabric? This is crazy. Don't even try, Claire. Something's going to go wrong, right? Use a straight stitch. Move my needle over. Increase your stitch length. If you have a treadle sewing machine, you can do this as well, or a featherweight. I mean, I meant to say featherweight. Treadle, no. Featherweight, yes, because treadle machines have a different style foot attachment. And this is also why you can sew all sizes of elastic with this foot. The, the wonderful feature is its grab. Is is the way it locks the elastic into the feed dogs. Then you have this beautiful little waistband. Okay, I'm gonna do some, let me see. I should stop. Yeah, I should stop. I'm having too much fun. time is it? Yeah, it's almost four. I was having fun. All right, I know what I used to do, and I would go like this, and if there's any little girls on, I, I would use, I had this edge, I use a rick rack, and I just don't know where that is right now. So you can hem with a rick rack and have it be absolutely perfect. So then I would go like this, and I go, does anybody here have a little girl or anyone that wants to play with Barbies? And I throw it out and give them away. So I gave away, I give away Barbie skirts at the shows all, all day long, should you want one. I think I have a Barbie somewhere around here that my daughter sewed. Okay, with that, 
don't not t know. I don't know what you were trying to say, Ellen. She used to come here, but I don't think she likes the East. Well, here's the thing. I have to fly. And I don't know how the shows are doing yet and if it's profitable enough for me to go. And when I'm not, when I'm at the show, I'm not here. So I don't know where my lid is. And by the way, Amy, at the show, I don't even try to keep my lid on. It's going to bug you. <laughs> so if you like this video, go ahead and hit that like button on your way out. If you're in the live chat, go ahead and do that as well. I adjusted the pressure on the presser foot because you want the, the standard or the strongest pressure on the presser foot because we're taking this stretchy elastic. If you try this with any foot on your machine right now, just take a piece of elastic, put it underneath the foot, don't even try to sew, and just stretch the elastic from the front, like you see here. And no other foot will hold the elastic without you having to also hold from behind. And if you've ever stretched in both directions while trying to guide your fabric, sewing elastic before, you know that you feel like you're playing tug of war and you'd be like, all right, well, I got the elastic. Who's going to guide the fabric for me? <laughs> so this makes it so that sewing elastic becomes easy peasy. And uh, even little girls can, can do it easily. I love it when there's children at shows. I have this little boy once and he's, he had his tongue sticking out one side and he had the elastic like this in his finger like this. And all the ladies were going, because oh, he sewed it perfectly right along the edge. And that's just the magic. I don't know why that happens, but if I don't know if you noticed how accurate I sewed that elastic, how it stayed right on the edge. And it's been like that for 35 years. Been working on all the different makes and models of sewing machines I've ever used it on and doing that beautiful job. So that's one thing that the sequins and ribbon foot does. It also sews sequins on. Another thing I don't really have handy. But I do want to show you something cool about it. And I can do that without sewing. You sew the sequins on with a zigzag stitch and you can swirl around in any direction that you like. And then you can take the fabric and do a little wiggle and the stitches drop behind the sequins. So generally you would try to hide your thread by using invisible thread. But if you don't have it, you don't have to worry about it. Just match your, your fabric as close as you can to the sequin and then stitch around and wiggle and you can go, I oh, know this is just very challenging and I'm just the best sewer ever, but really it's the creative feet making you look really good, which is what happens when I do a show. The creative feet have been making me look good for years and I feel as though God gave these to me as much as you feel that you've been given something special when you have them. If you haven't got them yet, now you know. And it's my birthday and my daughter's birthday and my friend's birthday week. So I'm extending the birthday coupon. It's still 20% off at creativefeet.com. And I never have a sale going when I'm at a show because I want you to buy at the show. So take advantage of the coupon at creativefeet.com, which is at the top of this chat. And uh, if you haven't joined my school yet, Create with Claire Rowley, where you'll find the course, uh, the Creative Feed Extensive course. I haven't seen Ayako in here for a long time either. If you're hiding or you're on, but you're not in, know that I, I love you and miss you and uh, hope all is well with you as well. And I will see you all in the VIP chat Tuesday at 2. See if I can end this show gracefully. 
Somebody's not doing well. Oh, your husband. I kind of know him because we were on the, we were doing something and he was, he was talking too, right? I'm sending my love and I'll pray for him and for all of you. We all need prayers, don't we? There's that. That's what I do. And then I do that. I love you guys. Mwah. See you next. You know what? I'm going to pop in while I'm at the show and go live and show you things I really like. So on Thursday of next week, I'm going to replay the Valentine the what's it called book cover and it will be uploaded so you guys can chat with each other and watch it. I just won't be there and I can't. I can't be even in the chat. So there'll be a video playing each Thursday, even though I won't be in this room. I'll be on the road. So you guys can still hang out with each other and not miss out on your interaction that you enjoy so much. And I know you enjoy one another. I hope that you had a good time today and can't wait to hug you guys. I can't wait. I'm so excited. Bye.